All right, today we are going to walk through another daily UI prompt, and the prompt for today is a location tracker. Decided to do that on mobile and for a bus app, so to track your bus schedule. Um, we've done an app called Bus Detective at Gaslight, and I figured I'd uh, kind of expand upon that and do a different view and tweak it a little bit. So here we go. First step is to wireframe. So I'm going to have a placeholder here for a map because if you want tracking your bus, you want to see where it is on the map. Um, so you've got square here. We'll put the word map on it. Um, next thing is to show which route you're looking at. So which bus you're looking at. Currently in the app, we've got uh, uh, the tracking is per if you're at a stop and you'll see all the buses that come through that stop. So I wanted to do a um, view based on the route and seeing all those stops on that route. So we've got a list of the stops and lo or locations. I don't know which one you what do you want to call it? Stop, I guess. Here for that route. Um, and we'll do that in the vertical layout. And then here on the left, I'm going to have kind of like a tracker visualization to show where which stops the bus has uh, already come to. And we'll add little spots here so that we can show um, where the bus has already come. And then the first stop I think I'll do based on which location or which stop you're at. So you can select which stop you want to look at and know when the bus is coming to it. So we'll have that be the top stop. Um, and then I grade out the bottom two to show that that bus has already come and gone to those stops. And then the top three are which ones that the bus is coming to next. Um, so let's see, what's next on here? Let's go grab an image of a map. So I'm just going to go over to Google Maps and grab a screenshot. And then I will drag that in here. There we go. Um, it's kind of small. Let's see if we can get it up a little bigger. Bump that up. Cool. So we've got our map. Um, let's work on the typeface. I want to go for a clean sans serif. Um, we'll go for this one, source sans, and we'll bump that over a little bit. Um, Okay, so what's next on the list? We want to play with the, uh, let's actually start getting some real information here in here. So let's go with, I used to take this route. Um, let's go with um, Madison Road, Oakley, downtown, which is Route 11. Um, so let's see, I forgot to grab some rulers in here. So let's put our guides in, put that in at 100 pixels off of the edge on either side, and we'll lock those down. And that way we can make sure all of our content lines up and we've got a nice buffer or gutter there on the outside. All right, and we'll have that wrap and we'll bump these down. All right, and like I mentioned, that's Route 11 for the Cincinnati Metro. So let's go with that. We'll bump the size down and we'll add in the background similar to how we're doing on Bus Detective currently. Um, okay, play with the spacing there. Okay, so let's add in, we're going to bump those over to the right a little bit, and I'm going to add in the actual stop names. So we'll see that at this stop, Route 11 comes, but we'll also indicate that other routes come through this stop as well. Um, I'm going to play with the sizing of these numbers so that they don't compete with the route number up above. So we've got Route 11 and 12X. Those both come through the 8th and Walnut Street stop. Um, and let's do a color indication here to show visually that these are the same routes. And we'll add in another color for the 12X. Let's go with 
pink. Why not? Um. All right, let's. I want to try to scale that back so that it feels um, a little less prominent, and that way we're. It's a little more clear that we're looking at stop eleven. Um, but fading that pink back just made it look like it was a lighter pink instead of the actual unit being faded back. So I'm going to play with the opacity of the typography there and make it feel more faded out as a whole, as well as the background color. And that lets the blue stand out. Um, and let's add in some additional stops here. I'm just going to make some extra stops up because I forget which ones they are. So we'll go 5th Street and Walnut. Say we're going down Walnut. And then we'll stop at Court Street, and then we'll jump up into Oakley and go to Madison Road and Brotherton. I honestly don't know if those are real stops, but just naming street names. All right, so let's drag in the stops down here to show what other stops come through. And I don't know, I forget other route numbers, so we'll just go 71. And we will add a different color in there. And let's actually say only one comes through Court Street. And then we'll add in another route here in a different color. And let's round the corners of these just a little bit to soften them up a little bit. And we'll tuck those up a little bit more so that they feel more part of the stop name. Okay, so we've got that, and the other piece of information you're going to want to know when you're looking at this is what time does the bus come, or what time is the bus scheduled to come to this stop, or is it expected to come to this stop? So let's do, I'm going to bump those down a little bit because they were feeling a little giant. So we'll make them a little larger than the timestamp, but still smaller than they were, so they aren't taking over the screen. We'll play with the spacing here of the um, time that bus comes to the stop. And let's get them over on all the other stops as well. And we will say that the bus has come to these two. Fade those back. Um, let's see here. And we'll play with the times here so that it feels so it's obvious that it's a progression and not just copied and paste. And go with 902. Cool. So we've got that in there. And let's actually fade these stops back as well. So it's more clear that those the bus has come and gone to those, and you shouldn't look at them anymore because the bus is gonna come back around in a while after a while but not soon. Cool, and then the other thing in here is there's the timestamp, but then knowing about how many minutes you have so you don't have to do the math in your head. So we'll say, just pick a number, we'll say that was, I don't know, 18 minutes ago, 11 minutes ago, and then we'll say that that's, uh, I don't want to do the math, we'll say five minutes from now and 15 minutes from now. 10 minutes from now, right? 52 to 02, that's 10 minutes. Okay. So, next on the list, let's play with, uh, maybe that should go up. No, that feels weird. We'll keep with the pattern of name up top and number below. Let's work on the styling of the tracker. And get these a little smaller so they don't feel so clunky. We'll center those back up. And then we'll get the dots in line with the ruler over there, our guide, and in line with the timestamp to the right. All right, and we'll lighten up the stroke there so that it's not quite so visually overpowering. And then we'll add in an indicator that the stop has already come. So we'll fill in that circle. Let's make that a little bit smaller and fill it in. And we'll add that 
lighten it up a little bit. And we'll add that to the second one down there. Feels a little too faded. It's not quite obvious enough. So we'll actually, let's play with the color. So we'll do, we'll fill it in with the blue and kind of reinforce it that this is Route 11, the blue route coming through. Um, so let's do... We talked about having this first stop be an indication of the stop that you're at or the stop that you want to look at. Um, so let's add in a location pin here to indicate that this is the stop that we are at because obviously a bus doesn't stop at a particular stop. It's a route and they just go kind of in a circle and they make a loop. Um, so having there be one stop at the top here doesn't really make sense. And so we'll indicate that this is the stop that the bus is coming to, which is coming to us. Okay, so we'll have that there. And then the next step in here is that we want to indicate, um, let's get the spacing a little bit more. All right, we want to indicate which stop, where the stop is on the map. And let's see. All right, my screen grab I got. Already has a pin in there for the gaslight office, um, and that makes it a little bit hard to see. So I'm going to go grab a new one that does not have a pin dropped on it already, and then that way the pin drop is already, or the pin drop is specific to our stop. So bear with me. Go grab that. Do 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 do. And here we go. All right, so we'll get the map up here, and then we'll get rid of our other map, and we will get our pin up here on the stop on 8th and Walnut. And that's kind of faded back a little bit, so I'm going to actually darken this pin on the map and then also down below just so that it's obvious that those are supposed to relate to each other. I'm also going to add a little drop shadow so that it stands off the map slightly, but I don't want it to be too obvious. All right, so we've got our pin, and next step is to actually show the route on the map so we've got a visualization of where the bus is going. So let's add a little stroke here, and we'll round the corners of our joints here to soften it up and kind of go with the rounded corner of the route numbers down below. Um, and let's see, let's line this up a little bit better. And then let's actually add a clipping mask on this so that the um, route running off the bottom of the map there has a clean stop and isn't kind of at a weird angle with the bottom of the map container. Okay, so we'll send that to the back and get our pin back on top. And then the Next thing I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to play with these times so that it is a little more accurate. And we can show that the bus has already come to the um, map here. Sorry, I want to show that we're tracking the bus in real time. And so I'm going to update the times here and have it just be coming to our stop. It's already come to the previous three. And then that way we can actually... Um, show that the bus is live tracking on the map up here. And so let me try to grab, oh, no, that's not what I wanted. I want the path here. And so I'm going to grab that, copy, paste, and then I'm going to bring this back here and let's get this lined up a little bit better. And I'm going to fade back the color here to indicate that the bus has already come there and the bus is located right here close to our stop two minutes away like we updated down below. And we'll add a little indication that this is where the bus is and we'll add a drop shadow to kind of mimic the location pin there. Um, and that way we can see that the bus is just just a little bit away from our stop. And the last thing I'm going to do here is add in a back arrow, and that allows us to exit this route view and go back to maybe select another route or another stop we want to look at. Um, but that way a user is able to kind of escape this view, and they're not stuck here. All right, so let's actually let's bump that down a little bit. And let's add a little drop shadow here to kind of stick with the 
the pattern we've got with elements on the screen having a slight drop shadow. Alright, so the last step in the process is to mock this up for dribble. And create a dribble shot, because that's where I've been sharing these. So I am going to put a clipping mask on here so we've got our screen contained and then I'm going to adjust the artboard size to be dribble is recommended 1600 by 1200 pixels. And we'll round the corners of our screen here so that it feels more like a phone screen. And let's get that roughly centered up. Cool. And then I'm going to add a background here. That is the size of our artboard and get that lined up appropriately and send it to the back. Cool. And then we'll do a, let's, I want to do kind of a light, subtle background on this. So let's see if we can play with the idea of getting a map texture back there. But the screen grab that I have is the, a weird proportion and I think we'd end up getting pixelated. So I'm going to grab a different screen grab um, that is the right proportions in here. And, oh, I didn't mean to do that twice. Okay, cool. So we've got our map texture in here. And we're going to send it to the back and do a slight transparency on our opac what, transparent, make it slightly transparent, whatever that word is. Um, so make it slightly transparent so that texture is subtle, but the gray is blending in too much with the map that we have on our screen. So I'm going to make it this blue and kind of tie in that color palette. Um... But it's feeling a little flat, so I'm going to play with the drop shadow here on the phone and do more of like a, a drastic offset drop shadow here. And I'm going to actually play with the background of this blue color and make it a gradient. And that way we really emphasize the light that we've got going on with the drop shadow. So let's do this blue as a gradient. And we're going to pull that back. All right, and then let's switch these around so that the light is on the right side. And we will play with the angle so that it feels more in line with where we've got our drop shadow. Um, all right, cool. And then I want to actually center this up exactly. So I'm going to put the map in a clipping mask and then send it back to the back again. And center it up and then make sure we're aligned here. And there we go. We've got our dribble shot and we've got our daily UI prompt. Um, thanks for joining me. See you next week.